who look after, who search for, and who travels to different parts of the different places to watch athletes, to watch sportsmen play in different sports, and to judge whether they are really, you know, talented to represent in that particular sport or for a particular organization. Well, scouts are of different, uh, you know, types. Some scouts, they are very interested primarily in the selection of prospects. We will come to, you know, in, in Indian context, we will come to the areas where, you know, uh, scoutings are done for different organizations, whether it is the state, whether it is private, whether it is the central government, whether it is the clubs professionally. So, like I said, like it is there in that, um, in the notes, the scouts, some scouts go for searching for prospects, younger players who would require further development. We have so many academies in India, we can refer to it later on, which have been very, very helpful, which have been very, very, uh, you know, have, who has played a big role in producing so many uh, international players, especially in football for us. And uh, these teams of people are, you know, uh, the people who judge and who make an effort to find out potential future payoff players for a club, for an organization, as we mentioned. On the other hand, there are scouts who concentrate solely on players who are already a little bit polished, a little bit elite, and who, are, who will be available soon to make the next step to the main team. And, you know, through some agency or trading, they are ready to fill in for a specific need of, a, of, of teams and in different positions as, as, as per their expertise. We have other scouts, advanced scouts, we call it, who, you know, what's the teams, or we can say uh, in, 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 at the moment, uh, every club in ISL, I-League, even second division have what we call it performance analyst. And their job is to, you know, look at the players, look at the teams, how they play, and find out the strengths and weaknesses so that they bring up about the knowledge for their coach, for their team. So that is what uh, sums up about, you know, scouts and scouting in general. Uh, we go to the next slide to specify more on the topics. Now, uh, friends, we all know, these notes are very basic. Uh, the reason is that we wanted to start this RFOS and the Association of Indian Football Coaches. Our intention, of course, there might be people in the panel today. There might be people in the uh, group today who have more experience, who have attained a lot of uh, you know, certifications. But what we are looking at today is trying to understand, trying to uh, talk better of situations that usually happen in our country. So. Why do we scout? What is the reason we scout for? It can be, scouting can be for an institution. It can be for a club. It can be for an academy. It can be for a school team, a college team, or some NGOs. There are a lot of organizations which are looking at uh, the scouting. And uh, we have, uh, we do scouting for different age groups. It can be for a single team, it can, be for, it can be a single age group, it can be for different age groups. As per the you know, organization of All India Football Federation, we have youth uh, competitions from the age group of 13, then we have under 15, we have under 18, then it goes on. Then it goes to the national team, the, the highest level of uh, participation you can do as a player. Girls or boys team, of course. Now, Recently, I think uh, uh, the girls' team, unfortunately, was out of the Asian Cup because of, you know, COVID situations. But even me, I was very, very impressed with the first game they played, our national women's team. And uh, very soon, to this year, we have to go, we are going to have a under-17 World Cup team, you know. So, in India, apart from boys' football, men's football, I think uh, the girls' and women's footballs are taking a big step forward. And the credit has to go to the organization. Credit has to go to, you know, even the Reliance company because the RFOS has been sort of a pioneer in, in, in promoting sports at different level, different sports. And I think with the, with the support, I think we can improve much better. And speaking about the girls, as the saying goes, 
you know you know the national saying goes that uh, beti bachao beti padhao but i would add to that in a good way that beti ko bhi khilao time has come that girls really can compete at a high level and if you see the rankings uh the girls the women's ranking for us in india i think it's much much higher than the men's that's 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 what we we need to recognize also well scouting can be for a specific league sometimes uh you know they are in every state there are tournaments uh there are leagues maybe scouting is done for that short moment you know not necessarily for long term you know or it can be for one tournament or it can be for continuation of tournaments or it can be of a series of competition and uh, like i mentioned scout can be for a short or long term long term basically is where you know we have a program in a club where kids undergo training for a certain number of years the best example before uh it it, it would be the tata football academy where the the kids stay if i'm not wrong for four years studies there learn about life learn about soft skills learn about uh, life skills learn about uh, uh life ethics learn about social values now the isl clubs even many i good i i league clubs are doing the same there is always a long term program i myself was associated with uh, one shillong lejong fc where the long term program which was uh, you know coined by the owners i think it ran very well it ran very well i can give examples later on on some of the players who are still doing very well for the isl teams and for for the national team also so guys so friends so ladies this is why we scout now as you all know it's a very easy thing where where to scout you know it can be any school any school tournaments it can be any college tournaments like we mentioned there are community where there are community sports are there you know it might not be a very very well organized uh, but you can see talents there you can see some players there who can do who are doing better maybe there's an area where you pick that player a particular player and you know uh filter them to a better uh place for them to showcase the talent it can be a village inter village tournaments because you know uh the cream of boys or the cream of uh, selection always clubs associations scouts they want to go to all the places but it's not possible so usually they choose certain pockets they choose certain cities which they think are more relevant to or where you know most players comes from but it is very important that if you want to brought this if you want to bring more talents the pool has to be better the pool has to be bigger so we have to go not only the cities but we have to go to each village which is very important then comes the district uh you know when the, we were young representing our own district was something to be proud of then from there you get selected for the state or for the region and ultimately you go for the country so these are the places where we can scout and uh Ingo, so if i may just uh, yes. come in there and with Please. a question of course i think i know of the work you've done with Shil- uh, Sh- um shillong lejong and also the kind of players that you have produced over the years now i want to ask you of course there is a lot of importance given to cities or or highest uh, higher levels of the tournaments but how important is to really you know go down to the core of where like you said a lot of villages a lot of players do come from villages come from really uh, you know uh, very meager backgrounds so how important is it to go into deep into the roots of football and to you know unearth these gems as we call them and in your experience have you faced anything where you know a, a player might not be playing a prominent tournament but got picked up because there was a good scouting network in that area yeah i think uh, apur for uh, very lightly mentioned because you know uh, for my even my my own experience i can share i lived in meghalaya for very long but i stayed in a place a very small town called tura but uh, shillong was the city and all the selection trials all the main selection was to do you know it happened in shillong for example so we cannot go there so it is very important that as coaches we have uh, you know mm, we brought base our connections and try to you know if you have time or if you can't go it is very always good to have people not necessarily a coach maybe a friend who is who loves football 
who have uh, you know good eye and good ear of good players they're always there i would like to give an example of uh, a person uh, which has contributed to uh, good players in meghalaya's selection uh, a person called kenneth kongwar uh, he was not a qualified coach uh, he was uh, he didn't have any degrees in football but he always had eyes you know he used to go to villages watch tournaments and he used to go and watch the lower leagues in you know before in shillong we used to have a fourth division tournament third division he used to go and from there he you know pick up those players see their players and suggest to the coaches i think it is very important first thing is that of course competition is very important i think in india we keep on speaking about the lack of competition for the young players i think you know proper organized uh, games and tournaments competitions is the uh, still the much needed uh, is very much needed so you know uh, having competition in the village inter villages even in district cities are more you know they're more exposed to a lot of things which is much easier for them to step up but like you said yes a proof we have to you know dig deep go deep to the villages because there we will find for sure an earth a talent or two and for that we need to have a good like i said network or that will that desire that ambition to go deep to the shirts if you do that and i, I think, think yes just just to add to that sir i this is again a personal opinion and i'm no scout just to uh, inform everyone but i also feel you know coming from, i come from a small town and knowing that there are possibilities that i might get picked up it is also encouraging for the sports ecosystem of that particular place or city if you come from a small city and knowing that there is a person who got scouted from your place that definitely um, empowers other people to also follow that footpath or at least have that hope or belief that you know one day they might also get that call up and they might get to play in higher levels of course there are different levels but that in- instills a sense of confidence or hope in them which of course comes with uh, a good scouting network i would say that's true that's true just to add on to that before we go to the next slide a proof uh, you know in india we have certain pockets all over the country where football players mostly come from uh one is not is uh, definitely and uh, if you speak about uh punjab for example the northern part it is where we get uh, say a sandeep jingan for example you know right. then we have uh, say for example in in the south you know we have a lot of talents there kerala karnataka you know and we have of course bengal always there you know i think bengal is famous for producing <laughs> the maximum number of goalkeepers i don't know what is there the speciality but if you see isl if you see the national teams you see many bengali goalkeepers and who are doing very well competitive um i think uh, in this regard i think uh, uh uh we have to you know uh the thing is that we have to be well organized in this and i would like to mention in this regard some clubs for example say uh bangalore for example they also say uh, go to say manipur not not in fault the main city they go interiors where they scout even the many isl clubs when i was part of kerala blasters also we did a lot of scouting there the reliance for the real young champs also does that and very well organized the young champs are very organized they, they have a lot of scouts uh, especially in the pockets in the good pockets for example in mizoram they have uh, i i i know of them you know uh, there are scouts who does that and who sends ultimately the boys to uh, mumbai for the final 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 trial and uh, apart from that i think uh, the parent body all india football federation is doing a very very good job i was very very surprised uh, when i came to know that uh, one of the scout of the national uh, body went to a place called tura where i was uh, live for 40 years or almost there i never thought that nobody will is there tura but he was there so the networking and the desire and the planning is much better for scouting and this is very important for us to grow as a football industry i think that is a very important uh, interesting topic that you just i mean brief that you just gave on that uh, even i wasn't aware of that but yes thank you so yeah we can go to the next uh, slide uh, gurmit well this is uh, sort of a uh, what do you call it uh, again we continue to speak on about uh, you know uh just give me a second i need to i can see the whole of this slide mm. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, just just uh, a repetition or just a uh, reinstating of uh, you know the places where we can scout. You know, like we mentioned, their local leagues. Every state has their local leagues. Every state has local leagues. It might be you not know, the Grand Manor, but their local leagues, which runs not for long, but that is a place where you can go and scout. And uh, if you are really willing, if you are ready to spend, if you have the means and sources, if you go deep, you'll find talent for sure. And of course, one of the biggest source for you know uh, unearthing talents are the schools, colleges, tournaments, the club tournaments, clubs. Sadly, I would say that there are less, uh, you know, uh, tournaments happening. Uh, one, I always, uh, you know, friends from abroad, when they speak about, uh, you know, competitions, uh, it, it looks very easy, but one very challenging factor I feel is India is such a big country, you know. To go from, say, to go from Goa to Manipur is a challenge. To go from Punjab to, say, Bangalore is a challenge. Because the transport, it includes a lot of, uh, you know, uh, of course, money, resources, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not like in a European country where it's not a country is as, as big as maybe one state of us. So when you, you know, it's so, the effort is always there, the good intention is there. But when you speak about of all these things, it's, it's always challenging. It's always challenging. Yeah. But if, if you really want to have a good team, good batch of boys in different age group, these are the places where you have to go. So I course. have a question uh, which has come through the Q&A box and okay. this is again to reiterate to all the participants. If you have any questions, if you see the Q&A box on the bottom of your screen, you can type it in and we will tend to it. If not now, then by the end of it. And if you have Hindi mein koi question in Hindi, you feel comfortable in Hindi, you can type it in Hindi type kar sakte ho, and we can give you the answer. Aapko de uh, but uh, as of now, sir, the question stands, it, it is from Priyan Arora. Okay. He says, I am a 15-year-old goalkeeper who lives in Delhi. Yeah. What type of competitions are you uh, scouts usually present at? And I think that is a question for even when I can look back at my playing times. Mm. That is one question that I think all aspiring football uh, kids look up to. And is there an age? Another question I would like to ask you. There is also this conce preconceived notion that um, if you're above the a certain age, then you don't stand a chance because people have a five-year uh, go ahead uh, head start against you. So, is that really something scouts look into? Like, if is it is any age too old for someone to get scouted at? And are there really any tournaments that uh, kids can you know aspire to play at, which are highly scouted or where scouts are heavily present? Yes, of course. Uh, you know. For the young boy who is asked this question, this is very valid. In India, you know, compared to other European countries, we started training, you know, uh, specific training very late. Um, say, for example, uh, I think uh, very long time back, if uh, any one of you remembers, there was a sports authority of India program called SPDA, which was uh, relevant all over the country, where they, um, where they were scouting for boys under, I think, 12 that time, if I'm not wrong. Someone correct me if I'm wrong there. So that that process was there. Now, for, for a young boy who's 15 years old, I think, you know, for you, the best place would be, you know, first to be get in, enrolled to the academies which are taking part in national tournaments. Say, for example, every club, who those who, uh, you know, want to be recognized, who those who want to play the national uh, leagues, has to be recognized by, by the All India Football Federation. So as a young player, okay, I started late, but I should be smart enough to find out the clubs which are playing national tournaments, which are playing more tournaments, and go there and you know uh, take a chance. And there is no harm in keeping knocking the doors. As human beings, as person, knowledge or job or work or clubs or anything, you have to be very persistent. You have to be very inquisitive to get something. If you keep knocking, somewhere or the other, the door will be open. And then it is up to you. If you're good enough, I think there will be opportunities. Tournaments, where, you know, scouts goes usually, before it is to be, I would say, the Subroto Cup, which it still is. Subroto Cup is one tournament which is very well organized by the army. And uh, many players have come out from there. If I'm not wrong, Sunil Chetri is one who has progressed from there. Maybe, you know, 
I think Shunish from Delhi and maybe I think he, uh, someone, one of the best player, maybe he had a bet from there. So uh, other thing is the, like I said, in the national tournaments, under 13 league is there, under 15 league is there, under, you know, 18 league is there. So these are the main tournaments uh, where you can, you can get exposed to. And for that, well, you don't think that you're late. Just to get an example, just to get an example, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, for example, uh, he was uh, scouted by Sarah, not scouted, when Manchester United played again, I think uh, his club in Portugal. I think he was 15 or 16 years. And uh, when the Manchester United played and showed Ronaldo with that level, most of the senior players said, that, hey, sir, Sir Alex, this is the boy we have to bring to the club. So that was 16 years, I believe. So no, of course, for that, saying that, you have to have certain abilities, you know. Without, without, without certain abilities, it's, it's going to be very, very difficult. So if you, have, if you know that you have certain talent and abilities, you are the person who's going to help yourself by knocking at doors, connecting with coaches, connecting with senior players, go and meeting them. Have to do, have to, have to search, have to knock. That is one way out, I think. Going to uh, the topic, uh, where to scouts. Again, we relate to the school's tournaments, the intra or inter-school tournaments. Uh, we can uh, find out uh, good players from coaches, from the PE teachers. I think Apurf mentioned about uh, uh, the aim of uh, you know, RFA wise is that uh, empowering the PE teachers. Physical educators, education teachers are very, very important because they are the persons who lay the foundation for all the players in different sports. Because we start from school. Everybody goes to school, most of us, I mean, of course. So that we don't have specialized coaches there. Physical education teachers teach us the basics, teach us about uh, what is needed besides the technical know-how, discipline, sincerity, truthfulness, hard work. All these are taught by the physical education. So it's very, very important that they are empowered. Of course, the PE teachers, apart from their knowledge in general sports, they can upgrade themselves by doing courses, which is very available at the moment, fortunately, or unfortunately, because of this pandemic, this virtual way, you don't need to spend traveling, you don't, you don't need to, you know, spend so much time or money traveling to different places, you can sit in your room, like we're doing now, and learn about so many things. It's about upgrading ourselves and trying to improve, the more we improve, as a PE teacher, as a coaches, the better delivery in terms of technical know-how will be there. And the players we are teaching, coaching will become better if we know better. Easy as that. So I think we, effort has to come from us today for all of us. We are at a certain level. Everybody who is uh, uh, attending this, I think we are at a level where we want to improve ourselves. We want to achieve something. But to achieve that, we need hard work. We need to learn more. We need to search more. We need to challenge ourselves. We need to be ambitious enough to, you know, keep on learning what we don't know. And if you don't know, we keep learning. And there is no harm in saying that if you don't know, I don't know. Then we have to search to improve upon that. That's a way to go forward. And of course, from national competition, states, district events, these are areas we have covered in the last, in the previous slide. But these are the places where we can scout. Lots of places. If we plan well and if we implement well, we have so many, so many areas to scout from in, in, in a country like India. Yeah? We can go to the next, uh, next slide. Apoor, if there's any query, you can come in anytime. Most welcome. Yeah? No, sir, sure. sure. I will get back. Yeah. And uh, now, just uh, on the headline, what, how? I think, you know, before being a scout or in scouting or in this process, one of the most important thing I feel is to be organized. Okay. Uh, you have a certain knowledge of how you're going to scout. Maybe you have attended a certain level of, uh, you know, certifications, but as an individual, as a person, if you're not organized yourself, then things are not going to go smooth. You have to be very, very, you know, very, very disciplined yourself. With your preparations, 
It's not that you know you're going to scout a match and you reach there maybe five minutes later or fifteen minutes later. No, or it's not that okay two two weak teams are playing so I need not scout. No, there might be there might be teams which are weak playing, but there might be certain players which might impress you. And if the location is very far, it's always an excuse. Oh, the traffic was bad. Oh, you know I didn't get the traffic. I didn't get the uh, transport means this. are just excuses. If you're really, really focused, if you're really, really interested in the improving in our scouting set, I think we have to be on time. We have to be prepared. We have to plan well. We have to get everything ready so that when we reach there, we are ready to focus. Now, once we are ready, we go to the next. That is what we are looking for. What are the criteria for that particular so every scouts scouts for different reasons. Maybe you know uh, some scouts search for different positions. Some sc- scouts search for different type of players. You know. So what criteria are we looking at? So these are very very important to note it down before we go. Are we looking at a positional player, or are we looking at a set of players? It can be a set of players. Maybe we are looking at a centre back and a striker, for example. And on those players, we are scouting. What are the criteria we're looking at? Are we looking at a very technical player? Are, are, are we looking at a player who is good, having good height? Or combination of both? So the criteria set up by the particular club for the, scout to, for the scout to look upon has to be very, very specific and clear. Yeah? And after that, of course, our expertise on analysis on analyzing the players is very, very important. We have a knowledge about what we want to look upon, whether it is about the technical skills, whether it is about the first touch, as simple as that, whether it is about his awareness, whether it's about his communication skills, which is very important in certain positions. So depending upon what you want to you know, look upon, I think we have to write it down, we have to note it down, of course, scouts have the system. Different scouts have different systems. Say, for example, I would like to give an example of uh, one scout which I was very impressed. I read about him. Uh, his name was... Uh, what was his name? Uh, his name was... Uh, he was a Brazilian uh, guy who scouted, uh, I think, Van Nistelrooy, Ronaldo, uh, uh, even, the, you know, uh, uh, Kevin De Bruyne. So, you know, for him, he, I think his name was... Uh, Peter Divisar, I think he's a Dutch guy. So there are different uh, uh, specifics which we look at, but for him, what he looked upon when he was scouting was about the skill of the player, about his vision, of course, physique, not the most important, but in certain points, it's important, the mentality, and his character. Character is okay, you have a strong mentality. But there are certain players with characters. Characters when you are down 1-0. Characters when you are leading. Characters, maybe, you know, you keep on going. Maybe it's last, uh, maybe injury time. But the teams keep on going. One the league which, uh, you know, really, really impressed in terms of, um, you know, never die attitude is the English Premier League, I would say. Even at the injury time, one minute, 60 seconds, uh, 50 seconds, 40 seconds, they keep on pushing. They keep on pushing. They believe that they can still score at least one or two. So the type of character, the type of mental is also important. So different aspects of what Scout looks upon, but these are areas where, you know, we have to be good and, and we have to, when we see and analyze it, we have to be very quickly and, you know, uh, see and, uh, you know, try to... Uh, Observe and try to get whatever we want from if, if yeah. as a scout. If I may, if I may interject, uh, yes. we have a question just which extends to the conversation we just had or yes. what you just briefed. So Pratik Chopra he asks for scouts. How important is the subject of psychology really? Because as a scout, you see the physical aspects of a player on the pitch, but is it equally important, if not more, to understand the man- mental characteristics of a player and how how much do you prioritize that? Oh, well, I think uh, I'm not an expert in terms of uh, uh, the psychological part, but, but well, 
psychology is important, but as a player, what is important is your technical skills, first and foremost. You might be very mentally strong. You might be very, very much mentally strong. You might be, you have a good character. You're always pumped up. You work hard. But if you don't have the skill set for that particular sports or particular positions, say in football, if you don't have the skills, if you don't have a good dribbling technique, if you don't have the vision like we spoke about, if you don't have uh, a, the passing abilities, or if you don't have the heading ability, if you're a center back, for example, I think psychology comes later on. Of course, of course, as a coach, as a scout, for example, you can see. But there, I, I, I don't believe that scouts straight away look at the psychological part. I remember, I remember one of the greatest coach, Pep Guardiola, saying that when he sees a player, I, I think he meant by a youth player also, the first quality he looked at the player is his dribbling skills. His one-to-one -one ability to be the player. That's what he looked at, as he says. And as you can see, as truthful to his philosophy, if you see Man City at the moment playing, there might be a lot of short players. Before it was David Silva, now Bernardo Silva, Gundogan. They're all, uh, they're all short guys, but technically so good. They're technically so mobile. They're technically so efficient. They have good visions. So I think uh, for the boy to you know get into this, I think first it is important that you first go to your technical skills. Then the other thing I think you can improve upon. So for just that, as an ex sorry, yeah, just sorry. an extension to that. We also have another example in Mario Balotelli. We all know, uh, you know, we all hear about what his. Um, career could have been if he was more disciplined so when you look at so there will be certain characters which you know are uh, rebellious in nature they go against what the coach asks of them or what his parents ask of them and mm. they usually create they might uh, affect the harmony of the team so uh, do you look at these uh, players and accept them and try to change them or how do you uh, when you're scouting such, I mean, like, I think just as an extension, this being part of psychology, is it really important for you that the harmony of the team uh, remains in balance or you take up these challenges as a scout, as a coach that, you know, having difficult personalities also is part of uh, what you like to pick up as a challenge, I mean. I think uh, in football, I think uh, uh, just to speak uh, for a moment about uh, high uh, at the elite level, I think the man management skills of the coach are different with different coaches. Some coaches really like the type of players who can really, on the pitch, they're a bull on the pitch, they fight for the team, on the pitch, they'll do everything, but outside the pitch, they're good human beings. You spoke about Mario uh, Balotoli. I think he's back in the Italian team. Why, why is he back? Maybe he had a character which was maybe against uh, a normal, you know, society uh, uh, rules or, you know, uh, against, against the social good values. But maybe he has, he has improved upon that. And now he's back, they say, in the Italian team. I'm not sure. I heard the news about that. For me, if, if a player is rebellious, if a, but it's very good. I would, I would look at a player who, though rebellious, is very, very good. And he's one of the best players if he's there. I would try my best to convince him on a one-to-one. -one. Uh, not in front of others, not in front of everyone, but talk to him, take him out, try to understand his mental setup, try to understand his social background, try to understand what is inside. Sometimes the players who are very loud and those who are who shows very, you know, a lot of personality acting, they are the one who was, you know, <laughs> they are the they are the with, with the less, uh, you know, inside they're very, very, you know, uh, what do you call it? insecure. So just to hide that, maybe they speak loudly or they got angry or they try to be rebellious. But inside, they are very insecure. They're not sure. So that is an area where as a coach, coaching is not an easy job. It's not about just, you know, organizing a drill and, you know, setting a good drill and session and you finish it. No. It is much, much beyond that. And not as a group, not as a team, but sometimes individual talk, individual discussions, and trying to understand the psych, the mentality of the players on a one-to-one -one is very, very important. That will help, I think.
does that answer your query? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Last but not the least on this, uh, what and how, is we have to evaluate, of course, once we analyze a player, we make a, we make a report and give it to the particular agency, particular club, particular organizations we are working for. And that has to be detailed. Now, is there any blueprint? Is there any specific, is there any correct way of uh, scouting uh, uh, analysis and not and all? I think everybody have their own way. Everybody have their own way. But the basic thing is that, of course, it's about the technical skills. It's about how he coordinate with the game in terms of his tactical things. Of course, physicality. If you're looking at a goalkeeper or a centre-back or certain strikers, you need a little bit of physicality there. So it depends upon the, the need of the particular coach whom you're scouting for or the particular organisation we are scouting for or an academy, how the academy's philosophy in terms of the players they need for the way they want to play. So it covers all that, you know, in terms of scouting. Any questions there? Or we go to the next slide and that's where maybe... Yes, uh, Gurmeet, uh, and we have another slide. Yes. Now, before... This is the last slide I think we, we have, right? So we have one more after this. Okay. So, uh, friends, uh, if you see in this a specific counting... One of the, if you see, there is a, a word attitude which is highlighted. Can you tell me why? I, I give you 30 seconds uh, just to type out why, why attitude is stressed here. Yes. What are the answers we get in terms of why it is highlighted to win a match? It, uh, Darshana says if attitude is not right, then the other factors don't matter. Okay. Uh, it defines every other attribute. That is Rohan Shah. Mm -hmm. Mental strength and mental preparedness okay. uh, is by Jaydev. And mm. because it determines the overall outlook of a player. True. And attitude is what you uh, cherish and what defines your future. Mm. A player with a good attitude is always a willing learner. And football is a team sport, so attitude is most important. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, friends, for that. I think, uh, you know, why it's highlighted for me is that, well, you might have a good organization, you might have a good skill, you might have uh, a very first touch. When you speak about the first touch, you can speak about players like Berbatov. Uh, Size and physicality, if you speak about size and physicality, it's important. If you speak about size, striker, Lukaku, for example. If you speak about size, Messi, for example. <laughs> so different sizes. If you speak about control, control the game, control the space of the game, control the rhythm of the game. In terms of speed, in ISL, you can talk about players like Bipin Singh, players like Udanta. Uh, yeah, so these are... Example, tackling, tough tacklers, Sandej Jingan, for example, talker, good communicator, who organizes team well, awareness, bravery, these are very, very important. But in spite of having all this, if your attitude towards your practice, if your attitude towards your uh, other fellow professionals, if your attitude towards your coaches, towards other staff, non-technical staff, if your attitude towards your parents, for example, very important. If your attitude towards the club owners, if your attitude towards the referees, if your attitude towards other people in social media, for example, if it is this attitude is not good, I think it is very difficult. So that is why we would like to stress here about the attitude. If you have the right attitude, that's why we say uh, when we train, hey, we, we tell the young players, all players, senior players, elite players, we have to train with a good attitude like we want you to play the game. If you don't have a good attitude in training, you might be the best player, but maybe you can't contribute to the maximum which you can. So attitude is very important. So that's why, friends, uh, in the when we scout, we see all this, 
Now you can now you can ask, you can say that, but at a young age, it's very difficult. One day trial, two day trial is very difficult. I understand. But along, along the period of time where the boys are with you or the girls are with you in the academy or in your organization, try to stress on this attitude. And a good, a good player always have good, he might not speak out much, but his attitude towards his own the maybe discipline in terms of his own rest and recovery, his attitude in terms of taking care of his himself, you know, eating the right food, spending the right time the right way, and while training, always trying to be competitive. Not, you know, not uh, trying to break somebody's leg or not trying to doing anything uh, very detrimental. It's about being com competitive. And in the game, of course, winning, losing, no team in the world can win all the matches. But your attitude towards your own contribution and giving your best is what puts you aside for a longer period in terms and consistency and in terms of giving the best every time you step to the to, to, every time the boys or the girls step to the pitch to play whether it's a friendly match whether it's a competitive match whether it's a short tournament it's a long tournament attitude is always which we have to take into consideration yeah and for this it's up to you this is an example you can make another uh, rating also excellent good medium poor that way you can, you know, make it. Because I believe that many of you have already gone to maybe a larger or a better in terms of, uh, you know, certification courses. You can make your own. You can make your own the ratings also. Yeah. As per your need. That's, that's, that's it uh, on, on, this, on, this, on this slide, uh, which uh, we want to cover. And uh, in regards to ex specific scouting, uh, now, today we are not touching base. Today, in this topic, it's just like a foundation. It's just like a, a startup. There will be other topics very soon with very specific uh, positional uh, or age, you know, uh, scouting, which we'll, we, we can have in the next class because of time constraint and because of, you know, certain people can explain to you better on those terms. We will have that. But what is important again to reiterate and to sum up is that any scouting, we have to see the player's ability technically. And physically in terms of, of course, we can't read about uh, how fit they are, but at least there has to be some sort of physical attributes for a player to you know, play a game. So one of the elements is this, the physical attributes. And like we mentioned, uh, one thing is teamwork, sociological. You know, in India, the players or the who play football mostly come from the a little bit of social economic uh, you know background, which is not at the best. So, for them, for many of us, it's an avenue. It's a platform where we can do something and you know improve our life, improve our family life, the community. So it's very important that uh, uh, when we do the scouting, it's very good to consider this type of uh, situations also because uh, maybe the players comes with a very, not a very, you know, setup of, uh, of, of uh, playing gear, for example. But they might be a very good player. Or if you can, help them. Last but not the least is again, we speak about, we reiterate, we mentioned again, it's about the attitude, the mental, the psychological factor. I think this will, we keep on growing. The more we train with a better planning under better coaches, the more we play competitions, the more we are exposed to, you know, tournaments and matches is where we, we, we keep getting stronger mentally. I think that will come yeah, as, as, as per the need and as per the time. So these are the areas, specific areas, uh, we would like to consider when we do the scouting, uh, any age, at any level, the technical, the physical, the psychological, and sociological. Sociological is also very, very important because India being uh, a place where there are varied, you know, beliefs, varied, uh, you know, uh, 
religion in a good way, I'm saying, you know. So it's very, very important to check, to take into consideration all this. So I think uh, we come to sort of the end of this topic. Um, I'm not sure whether it has been very helpful, but if there's any doubt or if any other suggestion, a better uh, inputs, uh, most welcome. From my end, I once again appreciate RFOYS, AIFC for this platform. Hopefully we can share more ideas and we cannot take in all the questions, but Apurf, if you have any queries, few queries we can take on. And so we, we will just it. take uh, two, three questions as we still have a few minutes left for the presentation. Thank so you. please do, uh, we, and, and to all those participants who've raised your hands, we apologize. We, uh, if you have any questions, you can type it in the Q&A box as we're not uh, tending to personal questions here. So, so one of the questions that came up is, um, I think an interesting question also. He, uh, Crispin is asking, uh, there are some players that come from a humble background and the academy or the club from the region uh, charges money to be a part of that particular academy or club. In that case, what should that player do if he really wants to play there? Uh, a very interesting question. You know, I came across in one of my mentorship program, uh, a person from Nagaland, I won't say his name, but uh, he had a very big plan in, in, his, in, in Nagaland uh, where he wanted to set up an academy. Then I said that, uh, okay, uh, you set an academy, of course, you're going to charge some fees. But what about uh, some of the players who might come but who, doesn't, who can't pay fees? What will you do? Uh, so when he said that, okay, if the player is very good, I'll definitely make an exception. I think to claim that sort of, uh, you know, of course, the background is very poor, but uh, for the benefit of the player and for the benefit of the academy, that player or any player has to have a certain level of uh, you know, ability, right? Otherwise, you can't just claim that, no, I, I, I deserve it. I think in life, if you think that you deserve, then you should have to have some sort of, of you know, ability, some sort of skill. Otherwise, it would be wrong. Of course, uh, now you can see lots and lots of uh, uh, academies coming up, which is a good thing. But my request is that for we don't look only at the, you know, money which is important, but please let us look at uh, something like, you know, doing something good for the society by helping players who, can, who, can, who cannot pay or you can have a special day for them, you know, if not every day, at least one or two days, one session in a week, uh, the, which, which can be free for them. I think that is going to help whoever is running an academy or an organization. Definitely is going to help. I, I, I think... Uh, if you speak about uh, central government's uh, schemes like Sports Order of India Sai, they have centers which are free. If you get selected, you get uh, free coaching, uh, free food, you know. That is also an area where you can explore. Well, then, yeah. Another question is, um, it's from Mush uh, Faisal Mushtaq. He's asking, he's just completed his D license. Now, what is the procedure to become a professional scout from there? And what is the pathway? Uh, well, uh, I think, like I said, you know, uh, as coaches, we need to be inquisitive. We need to be uh, asking around. I don't know uh, he's from which state, but if he's from, say, state like, for example, because we have a lot of senior coaches from every state. If you talk about Jammu and Kashmir, for example, there is a guy, Sajid Dhar is there, for example, who have worked in the national team, who have worked in the association. If you speak about uh, Calcutta, which being there are a lot of coaches. If you speak about North, is there a lot of? If you speak about uh, Karnataka, if you speak about Tamil, there are a lot of. So, you know, you have to you have to go and knock. You have to. And now the pathway, it's a it's a big word, but you got to be able to search. You got to be able to, uh, you know, if you have done your D license, well, the next step is. So I think the next step is uh, C, for example. So for that, get in touch with the coaches who have done C. How do they do? What are the process? Or all India football federations is always ready. The right person. And at the moment, we have a very, very, you know, um, expert or very, very, a person very dedicated as a director of coaching, Mr. Savi Madeira. He has a group, good coaches now under him. One is Sakti Singh from Gujarat. 
be in touch with them. They'll explain to you. They're always a phone call away. They're always uh, helpful. So we have to search the right people at the right time. That's what I would say. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, next one is from Rohan Shah. He's asking, how many matches do you actually need before coming to conclusion about a player and his skills? And what is your opinion about these one-day trials that happen? One-day trials is difficult. One-day trials is difficult. So at least, at least three days, I would, I would suggest. Uh, sometimes, you know, of course, again, it, it depends upon where you work, you know. So sometimes it's about organization and it needs, uh, suppose you want to do a three-day trial or one-week trial, for example, if your organization is very strong, uh, personally, what my experience tells us that what we do is that, you know, we at least do three days. For example, the first day is like filtering, you know, and for the youth, I think there is no point in playing a 11 aside. It may be like we do in the grassroots program, divide the pitch into four or two at least, make them play in a small sided games and keep picking up the good ones and give chance to the others who you have not picked. See them more. If a player is good, you find him is technically good, hey, note him and keep him, let him rest. Let the other players who, are not, who may have not seen much or whom you think are not good enough, give them more opportunity. Then second day can be again game or some other skills you as per your needs. Then the third day, as per the age group, play that a play a full a proper tournament. And for that, I would prefer a trials with trials, but if there is a local team in that region where you have gone for trials, try to you know make a friendly game i think that is the best way i feel because in india there is always teams uh, around the trial area around trial places where you will find teams so the final day can be matches and and try to give equal opportunity equal playing time to all the players that should be the key it's not that the good players get maybe you know 25 30 minutes the other players get 10 minutes no as much as possible equal playing time is important so that's what i would like to say Thank you so much for that, sir. Next question, and this will be the last question, unfortunately. If you do have still have any questions, please do write us it at info at rfyouthsports.com. And uh, we will also have a webinar next week. So you can tune in for that as well if you still have any questions. But the last question, sir, is from Suhail Nayar. He asks, uh, when you scout a player, what is the time horizon with which you pick a player? Basically, how long do you scout? Like, when do you expect to see the results from him? And at what age do you think there's a visible and clear differentiation in the level of Indian players? Is there an age group where you see clearly that this player will go on to a certain level? Is there an age group for that? That's not an easy question, but a very, very pertinent and very good question. Uh, in the Indian context, what I can say is that you know, we start uh, at the national level. We start competitions at under 13. So if a player is at 11, 12, 8 years old and competing at a certain you know, level and in a, in, in a, in a very uh, organized competitions, I think that is, an, that is the place where you can sort of not fully, but at least uh, see that whether that boy has a potential to grow to the next level. Uh, because when they play competitive game is the, is the real picture where we, 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 we can guess, we can know that, okay, this boy has some sort of talent to progress further. Because after that, under 13, that's that under 15, as group comes up in, as, as the national tournaments goes on. I think, well, there might be younger players who are very good. Now, if you take the example of Messi, for example, 13 years, he went to Barcelona, 16 years, he made his debut and, you know, example. But in India, we still, like I said in the beginning, we started quite late. If you ask me what is the right age, it's very difficult to you know, say, but uh, making them play in competitions, and that is the place where you can judge and see for yourself. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you so much, Tangboy, sir, for hosting such a wonderful and informative workshop. Uh, I'm sure all of us gained some valuable knowledge from it. And thank you to all the participants to, uh, for attending today's webinar. We hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you back with us next Friday where we will have a fresh topic for you uh, in scouting. So please do tune in at the same time, Friday 4 p.m. Do uh, look out for the invite on our social media pages. So do follow us on Instagram, Facebook. And yes, uh, it was glad having you all of us back. Before you leave the session, just a kind rem reminder, you will get a feedback form right after you exit the workshop. So please uh, 
do fill it in. And on behalf of the RFIs and the AFC family, a big, big thank you. And wish you all a great weekend ahead. This is me, Apoor, signing off. And wish you, uh, and hope you all have a safe and 